Hello, welcome students of Masters in English and all our viewers and listeners at the regional center, centers and study centers. Uh, as you must have already uh, seen, uh, today's uh, topic is related to MED7 concerns related to women in recent selected Indian texts. I have in the studios here with me Dr. N. K. Jain. I would first of all like to briefly introduce uh, Dr. Jain to you. Of course, no introduction to Dr. Jain can be brief. Uh, he is a person with expertise in both literature and language uh, streams. Basically, his PhD is on American drama, but he specializes in modern drama, Indo Anglian drama, uh, Indo Anglian novels. Uh, uh, translation studies, uh, then uh, English language teaching. He has also uh, excelled uh, with distinction uh, when he did his postgraduate uh, certificate in teaching of English uh, at CIFL. Uh, and his present uh, interests include Indian love legends, Dalit literature, folk literature in a big way. So he is a widely published uh, uh, person and he is into translation in a big way. So Dr. Jain, you are most welcome here. Thank you. Uh, now we have completed 60 years since and prospect on the literature 90s what in, in, in the Indian English writing or Indian writing uh, literature uh, we find gender uh, remains a very sensitive theme and uh, this topic is also uh, related to two texts that we have in, in uh, for our MEG 7 syllabus. One is Mahesh Japanese Pei Para and the other is uh, Clear Light of Day by Anita Desai. So, uh, Dr. Jain, how do you see the Tani, the Tani treatment of this theme in the play Tara? Uh, well, you know, the theme is uh, pervasive all around. Uh, but so far as uh, this play is concerned, uh, the writer has uh, presented uh, the theme through the consciousness of a brother, of a brother who has abandoned his twin sister and who regrets having done so. But it is too late. The sister is dead and gone. He can only yearn for reunion with her. Yeah. Uh, the play begins and ends with the brother's monologues and that provides some kind of a frame yeah. for the brother 20s sister whether the memory is of his own days into a play is very desperate to produce stuff that is acceptable he tries alternatives and finally he finds that he has succeeded even though we have the play thus but he finds that he's not successful and all he can do is yearn for reunion with his sister uh, and finally, you find that he uh, can achieve uh, togetherness with his sister only uh, in an act of imagination yeah. when he wishes for union with his uh, sister and embraces her. But all that is in the imagination. Yeah. Uh, but, but don't you think that uh, it is little away from the conventional way in which the theme, gender theme has been presented by the Tani or by some other playwrights earlier because in an interview which we, which we had with Mahesh Dattani in IGNU here studios, he said that uh, when people read Tara they tend to focus on the medical details of the play but that is where he says the play is being misread because uh, it's, he uses uh, Tara as a metaphor for being born equal as male and female and sharing so much more and uh, when they are conjoined as twins in the womb but the surgical separation is not just a physical separation but it becomes a cultural distinction he says and prejudices set in uh, so uh, in a way 
it, it, it's, it's a very serious concern that he's showing. So the operation is just a metaphor. The Siamese twins being separated becomes a metaphor for the social evil, the practice practices of gender discrimination on, in society. And he also said that at another level, it also could deal with the individual having uh, both a male and a female self. And it will just depend is that depend on whether your gender is male or female. Uh, and female gender is definitely given up lower priority. Uh, do you agree to this? Well, you first said that the play, um, uh, the play is a uh, novel that it uh, adopts uh, a particular way. Now, I think the distinction of the play lies in the fact that it is a memory play. Yeah. Because memories don't lie. You cannot tamper with those memories. And memories take you right inside your mind. So that uh, when you rely on the memories of a person, you think that uh, you, you, you can be sure that you will achieve uh, the effect that he is aiming at. And memories are also intimate. So uh, in choosing uh, the memory mode, uh -huh. Mahesh Dattani has given us a very authentic, intimate a glimpse of the dynamics of the whole whole family. He has chosen a family, and he has tried to show the reactions of uh, various persons, how they act and why they act. Uh, so I think that is a triumph of his art that he has tried to uh, sh uh, discuss this drama uh, of uh, gender discrimination in the context of a family and relies upon uh, memories for it. Yeah, but uh, do you think that there is something like uh, a, a, the La Nora in this play, something that is hidden, which is uh, not revealed, but you, you sense that there is something more to it than, than what is shown as you read the play? Uh, doesn't that come out also here, some amount of suspense? There is lurking suspicion in the mind of Tara about her father, but do you think that there is something of that uh, in the portrayal of Bharti, her behavior, the behavior of the entire family? Yeah, absolutely. I think Bharti is uh, trying to be over fond of Tara. Yeah. Time after time she says, drink milk so that you can be sturdy. And then she at uh, a point comes when he, she also offers uh, to uh, donate her kidney, uh, the husband. Uh, refuses, but then uh, when she is over anxious and she tries to pro be over protective, and try when she tries to say that well you are the star of my life, now that makes us suspicious of the fact uh, maybe there is something uh, there is some secret which they are trying to hide, yeah. and this comes out at the end of the play after Tara uh, after of course Tara is dead and so is uh, Bharti and then Mr. Patel, the father, he reveals that it was uh, the decision to transfer the third leg. You see, the conjoined twins had three legs, two of them were meant for, uh, for Tara and one was meant for Chandan, but the, uh, the, the grandfather, the Nana and the mother, they decided that it should go to, the third leg should go to the boy rather than the son. But biologically it should have come to Tara. It should have come to Tara because uh, the blood supply was, was, through, was, that. was through the uh, third, uh, yeah. which was given to Chandan. To Chandan. And she was given an artificial limb. Yeah, so th this was the big secret that, and I think this was a, some kind of a, f uh, pr produced a f sense of festering guilt. She al also, also, you know, lost control over her mind and she became bedridden and ultimately she died. Yeah. That, I think, was the punishment that she inflicted on herself or nature inflicted uh, on her. That was the secret. Yeah, but uh, isn't this uh, another very uh, revealing thing that the distinction between uh, Tara and Chandan comes about even before they are born? Because once it is decided that uh, uh, normally uh, after a child is born then the process of discrimination sets in but here it's decided right when they are in the womb and
that, that is a sad part of it. That is a sad part of it. That is how uh, uh, the writer has tried to engage our sympathies. That uh, this is how uh, gender discrimination operates, and in their case. After they were According to you, Dr. Jain is the In fact, you know, relevant or which is not, which doesn't have meaning, but I, uh, that is my Uttara makes about uh, the occupation of men uh, that I thought was, uh, was a very fine scene uh, which showed uh, uh, Mahesh Tani's artistry. Now, uh, actually, this seems like this. Uh, the, uh, the father, Mr. Patel, has asked Chanan to start coming to office. Obviously, the idea is to train him uh, to handle bigger responsibilities. Chanan refuses. Ultimately, Chanan agrees, but then on condition that he can bring his sister along. At that time, Rupa comes, and Rupa says, Well, I disturb you, and uh, Tara says, No, you are not disturbing. And then she makes a remark that uh, I think is very pregnant and very, very significant. And that remark is, uh, Rupa says, sorry, hello uncle, sorry, am I disturbing you? And Tara says, not at all. And this is important. The men in the house were deciding on whether they, are, they were going to go hunting while the women looked after the cave. Now, I think this is a, it may not be an explosive scene, but it is a very significant scene because here Tara is talking of a situation in the ancient times where there were cave men and men go, went out for hunting and the women they looked after the, uh, their home. But uh, the, the, the reason why, I mean the, the fact that she has uh, used this in the present context shows that things haven't really changed. So I think this uh, remark not only puts a larger construction uh, on the, ge the gender issue but also is a stinging comment on the on the father who insists that uh, Chandan should go uh, to start coming to office. So I thought that was my choice, but of course. <laughs> yes, uh, that takes us back to civilization and back to that nothing has changed much, the cone men uh, <laughs> behavior. But yeah. uh, don't you think that the revelation when she comes to know that, uh, that, you know, that her unquestionable uh, love for her mother was unwanted because what she did to her, of course that was her father's uh, interpretation of what really happened. But don't you think that that must have shattered her so completely uh, and um, I think after that she has nothing left but to sulk and to be unhappy and ultimately she perishes and dies. Uh, I think the whole uh, play is bringing us close to that climax all the scenes like coles and build up that climax uh, and which are the other scenes according to you uh, in which uh, this uh, which which sort of support this major theme or concern of the tani uh, another uh, a significant uh, scene uh, which i think again is uh, very very relevant here is the scene where Rupa discloses to uh, to the to uh, Chandan and to Tara that the Patels and they are a Patel family that the Patels used to drown their baby girls in milk. Now this is a horrifying detail, and uh, I thought by just introducing this very casually, uh, the writer has. Uh, uh, you know, introduced the uh, the the idea uh, of uh, female infanticide that is so common these days. Uh, in fact, it, it is said that in Rajasthan, uh, girl babies used to be given opium so that they could be put to sleep, and putting putting to sleep meant making them die. So that I thought was uh, again a very horrifying moment, and the horror of the whole thing is uh, increased. Uh, because Rupa says, oh, what a waste of milk. Look at this. Uh, just, uh, just one or two lines from 
the scene. Uh, it may not be true. You know, she takes care of. She wants to hurt. Now you know how Rupa is. She wants to hurt uh, Tara and Chandan. But she also says, well, it may not be true, but this is what I've heard. The Patels in the old days were unhappy with getting girl babies. You know dowry and things like that? So they used to drown them in milk. And Tara said, in milk? And Rupa replies, so when people asked about how the baby died, they could say that she choked while drinking her milk. Now here I would like to uh, refer to one other word that is used so commonly when uh, women go for a bottle. I hope you now if it and the use of murderous uh, at least selective reward. Cruel for Dr. Jain uh, for Vesiv and the son. What happened about the grandfather, the Nana, the other the fathers, the Dr. Thakkar? Uh, how does the right show that it is all there in these three characters? In fact, all the characters are influenced by this and it's so it comes so natural to them it seems. And uh, the first the most guilty the among the most guilty persons is of course the grandfather, the Nana. And it is he who takes the decision to uh, give the third leg to Chan. Now surprisingly the Nana takes his decision in consultation with the mother. Mother of the twins Bharti. Now one doesn't know why Bharti felt compelled. We are told whether they had uh, only she had other sisters and no brother or whether it, she was uh, persuaded by her father to agree. But then she uh, agrees. She is a party to the decision. And uh, I think... She Patel, uh, Tara's father, anywhere in uh, the picture? No, no, he, he, he is not. It's not shown anywhere. That is not shown. In fact, he says that he was not consulted. Yeah. Uh, when they consulted with uh, uh, Dr. Thakkar, uh, the Nana and uh, Bharati were present, and he was not present. Uh, but then he also is he also is equally, in a sense, equally guilty because he also says, oh, well, I have grand plans for, for uh, my son. He, and he is prepared to send him to England. In fact, that is why I think he has come to England. So that shows that Nana is wealthy and wealth also becomes the controlling factor. Oh, yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. And because uh, wealth means power and power is exercised. Yeah. And there is another person, Dr. Thakkar who misuses his knowledge, scientific power, knowledge, whatever, knowledge yes. uh, to effect what uh, should not have been done. Yeah. Somewhere uh, there's hierarchy rules everywhere. This power yes. equation is there all the time. Absolutely. Throughout the play. So, so the uh, play has to be, it's a multi-dimensional, I would say. Uh, everything, every bit is important uh, to build up uh, the, the whole theme. And what else were you talking about, Dr. Jain? Dr. Thakkar, you said, is important. Yeah, I think yeah. He, he is guilty. Now, he, of course, he, he also shares the general prejudice against girls. But I think he is guilty because he has betrayed, he has betrayed his profession yeah, uh, by agreeing to transfer the third to a uh, boy, to, to the boy rather than to the to the girl. To the girl, yeah. Uh, so he, I think, uh, is very guilty, and he has uh, uh, he has done it for a consideration because he knows that the that the, that the, the children's uh, grandfather is a rich person, he's a powerful person, and he gives gets him allotted a big plot in Bangalore so that he can have his uh, big. Uh, so there is nothing a home there. yeah there is a past structure whether it be the doctor his knowledge or the nana versus the patel then uh, tara versus her mother and even rupa versus tara there is always this show of who is uh, the more powerful of the two and the dominate the, the domination and then there are also very humorous uh, aspects to the play uh, uh, before that could yeah. I into it yeah. you see i think even chandan who is a co-sufferer even he is infected with this virus of uh, gender discrimination because the time comes when he goes to england forgets his sister 
Of course, he cannot forget her completely, but he forgets his sister, and it is only when he is there alone, when he thinks, when he is trying to put uh, the the play, uh, the, his memories together in the form of a play, that he realizes his guilt and he suffers for it. And then, when he realizes his mistake, uh, he is guilt-ridden, but he cannot do anything. Finally, he can only yearn and achieve some kind of a symbolic union with her in imagination. So even Chandan, who is a co-sufferer, he uh, cannot escape uh, this virus. Uh. So that the, the, the play shows how everyone is infected by it. And the gender causes suffering to men as also women. There also, let's say that it is not something which only concerns women, but the whole family suffers. And that, that is where we should make our students very uh, sensitive that uh, talk of uh, the Guinness, uh, Bharti Dai, Tara Dai looks a very, uh, it's all an imping and it's a tragedy. Uh, there's complete, for a point of time, uh, husband and wife, we see Martin Patel not having a good uh, yeah, equation, a relationship yeah. because of this problem, because what they've done, the past haunts them all the time. And then Bharti's uh, again uh, relationship with her daughter, if you read the play again, it's artificial because she's either very dull, she wants to do it and she does her kidney to her at a later stage. All this is like uh, retribution, some yeah. some kind of um, penance. But then uh, ultimately it doesn't help. The suffering never seems to end. So gender discrimination affects the whole family life. Yeah, including men. Yeah. Including men. The, 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 the whole play ends uh, uh, in a disaster for the family. Yeah. The whole family suffers. So, so another important uh, observation has been that though we are all the time concerned about hierarchies here, uh, there, there is power structure, there is the, the, the weaker versus the powerful like Rupa versus Tara, how she is making fun of her and how Tara is retorting and all that. But what is most visible is the gender discrimination in the play. Those things happen to all of us and we don't, they don't become visible. But what yeah. becomes visible is the, dis, the, is the act on Tara. The, uh, the surgical act on Tara and the consequences of that uh, big act. So that is the most visible form of discrimination Absolutely. in the play. Now, could I, uh, Professor yeah. Bhardwaj, could I uh, read out uh, what Datani himself has said about the gender bias? Uh, I have in fact collected some uh, statements of his. Uh, if you permit me, I will read out a few Where did of the them. these uh, appear? Uh, oh, they, they appeared in Deccan uh, Herald uh, and it was, uh, I think, one was in 2000 and the other was uh, in 97. Mm -hmm. uh, this is how it goes. I'll just read two or three ex uh, excerpts. Uh, firstly, uh, in an interview with Poonam Mohandas published in Deccan Herald 12th March 2000, Mahesh Dattani says that the conjoined twins are really a metaphor. This is just a repetition of the point that you've made. It's really a metaphor. These are his words. It's mm -hmm. really a metaphor that nature created equality, but society creates separation. And then the question was, all your plays deal with gender conflicts, the disastrous results of being forced to fit into gender stereotypes. The answer is yes. The stereotype of the man is, is that of the provider, penetrator, protector. Uh, the woman's uh, role revolves around nurturing. These roles can be only be fulfilled by marriage. Anything outside the norm is questionable. So this is the stereotype in which we try to fit both men and women and with disastrous consequences. Uh, the second uh, is a very interesting point. He talks about how the stereotypes developed and he says the, the stereotype of man as being more active and the woman uh, as being less active is apparent in the use of movement 
and these are his words i think it is to do with movement as well anything that requires wide use of space would be a man's job hunting for instance when threading a needle movement is curtailed so it's a woman's job the woman walks three paces behind the man because if she kept pace with him that would be seen as aggression there is definitely submission involved in being a woman you might have a caricature of the wife with a rolling pin never the wife being sexually aggressive the woman is not supposed to be sexually aggressive you will never have the man say not tonight darling i have a headache if it is the woman seducing the man she will always be the other woman never the wife uh, so uh, he has expressed himself uh, on the question of gender biases and he wants uh, those boundaries to be broken only then will man be fully alive and fully creative yeah dr uh, jain may i also substantiate with what he said here to us when Please. he visited he said that this uh, difference between man and woman is an artificial difference he says biologically there are polar polarities between the genders uh, which is meant to seek the union of one another but the cultural polarities are artificial and the boundaries hinder the natural union of the two sexes <laughs> so this is what uh, whether it is body to body or whether it is one self to another self so it's all cultural biologically it's meant for complete merger he says yeah. and which which calls for equality of status but that is not so so he has carried the you know similarity and differences to this extent to explain uh, his point of view yeah Uh, you were talking about this being uh, a memory play how the structure brings about that yeah uh, i think that's a very interesting point uh, you will notice that there are two two texts or two subtexts in the play uh, there is a scientific text scientific unemotional text uh, presented by dr thakkar you know dr thakkar is a doctor who was uh, uh, Well, let us say imported from america and who performed the operation a scientific unemotional text presented by dr thakkar that begins with union and ends with separation with dr thakkar feeling proud of his achievements on page 9 in my book in the first scene uh, he just um, he says to start with the patients were only a few months old three months old and they uh, they were united at the end he is uh, successful and unfortunately that is also the same text it moves in the opposite direction the second is uh, let us say we could call it the emotional text that begins with dan alone in england dan you know is chandan chandan has invented a new name for himself a new identity for himself he now has dropped the dan he has become dan anglicized and uh, his uh, the second text is his text he begins with despair he is alone in england able to write uh, make a play out of his memories he is desperate uh, he has forgotten his sister Uh, so uh, that is the second emotional text it begins with despair and then ends in yearning he can only yearn because his sister is dead and gone and he comes out sees a star in the sky makes a wish and the wish is for reunion with his sister and the final scene of play shows them embracing each other but that is only in imagination there is no union whatsoever but again i would say it's uh, symbolic and a metaphor for uh, equality and male and female uh, union absolutely <laughs> it reinforces that idea yeah. of uh, a union between equals yes. man and woman being equals yeah. and also necessary to each other yeah uh, dr jain before we come to the next text which is clear light of day i would like you to hint at or point out if you have read any play with a similar theme or or, uh, or
a story, a plot line like this. Uh, Actually, Mahesh uh, Dattani has himself read, and his here uh, in in his home home. It's a glass menagerie, and uh, it's also a memory play. In the play, also there is a brother who uh, deserts his uh, mother and his sister, and but he cannot really wipe out the memories of uh, either his neither his mother nor his sister, and he comes back to uh, just as. Uh, Chandan also comes back to uh, his sister, and uh, finally, uh, it's again a memory play. Uh, he, uh, at the end of the play, he says, "Well, uh, he he cannot really forgive himself uh, for betraying his uh, uh, sister and his mother because you know he is driven by the 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 infection, the virus of success, which is so important in America. Here, the emphasis is different. Here." Uh, it's a twin sister that he has uh, abandoned, and so he feels guilty. That is one play which uh, you Comes do well to read. Yeah. Uh, it's a wonderful play, and you will realize how uh, Majdatani has uh, adopted some of the technique that is used in Tennessee Williams' play, The Glass Menagerie. Yeah. Uh, uh, lastly, not just the theme, Dattani's contribution as a dramatist, uh, Dr. Jain, in this, the, the use of past, present, fusion of uh, time and stagecraft, stage setting, I think he has done a good job uh, as far as theatrical effects uh, are concerned. And uh, that way, I think it, c it can be a good example of... Uh, uh, a stage setting which is uh, so frugal at the same time which can reveal uh, time in its three dimensional absolutely, sense absolutely. and our students should also be able to read this play again and again carefully to see how he is achieving this uh, balance so uh, not only is this play important because of the complementarity of the male and female uh, uh, which is missing and which is uh, all pervasive uh, gender discrimination as we said but yeah. I think we should keep uh, this is the way the writers keep reminding the world that uh, the more and uh, it's becoming more and more brutalized we read about it all the time uh, our census tells us what is happening to the male female ratio and uh, we need uh, some kind of constant reminders to this uh, aspect which is very and therefore we decided to take up another uh, text uh, to highlight again some of the similarities and some of the way in which women have been projected let's say let's talk of clear light of uh, day do you see any parallel between the two Dr. Jain? Uh, well I would like to uh, <coughs> When uh, was it? I think um, uh, 60s, 70s. What when was it actually published? So the, it was published in 1980. 80, 80, 80, the yeah. theme of uh, complementarity of man and woman uh, is, is there, of course, in Tara. Uh, but there is a curious parallel uh, between Tara, uh, Mahesh Dattani's Tara, and the play and and the novel, uh, Anita Desai's novel. There is a scene uh, in in uh, Clear Light of Day where the elder of the two sisters, I hope you know the story. It's a we story hope so that you've read the play, uh, read the novel. Uh, uh, it's, a, <coughs> it's, it's a story of two sisters. The elder one is Beam. And Beam is the nurturer, is the, is the carer of the family. She's a teacher of uh, history in a college. Uh, but she takes care of, uh, she has taken care of her brother, of her, of her, of her abandoned uh, Masi of hers. Of everyone, there is a handicapped brother, Baba. He is take, she has taken care of her. Now, the scene that I wish to draw your attention to occurs on page 166, I think, where she, out of anger and frustration, because she has looked after them f for such a long time, that at one stage she says, "Oh well, you also go like your brother has gone to Raja uh, to to Hyderabad," and she shouts at him. Now, he, this handicapped uh, brother is always mute. He never replies back. So he, she vents out her anger. Later she, she comes back she, and she brings him a cup of tea and listen to this 
uh, uh, these are just her thoughts but these thoughts they have this idea of complementarity of man and woman that man and woman they are incomplete in themselves and they become complete only when they come together now listen to this she touched him on the cheek with one finger its whiteness seemed to be like a saint's that suffers itself to be kissed he woke at once and seeing her smiled and let's skip one or two sentences and then she says i brought you your tea she felt an immense almost irresistible yearning to lie down beside him on the bed stretch out limb to limb silent and immobile together she felt that they must be the same length that his slightness would fit in beside her size that his concavities would mold together with his convexities together now this is important together they would form a whole that would be perfect and pure let me read that again together they would form a whole that would be perfect and pure in in the same manner just uh, as uh, tara and chandan uh, they uh, in chandan's imagination they unite they they embraced each other uh suggesting that uh, they can become whole only when they embrace each other when they merge with each other together they would form a whole that would be perfect and pure she needed only to lie down and stretch out beside him to become whole and perfect the words that are used are whole and perfect so the, that that would be the perfection of their union this is one uh, curious parallel between the two texts of course both are texts which are based on memory both have love uh, between a brother and a sister in and you find that in uh, in tara it is the the sister it is the brother who abandons the uh, the sister similarly this something like this happens the raja uh, one of the brothers that uh, she has beam has also deserts so called uh, you could say that uh, his going away to hyderabad is some kind of an, a desertion he also deserts her so that there is uh, this um, curious similarity between yes this similarity we have just discovered because i can assure you when we thought of discussing this with you today we did not think of these yeah, similarities absolutely, absolutely. it so happens and there is lot of memory in this also Oh yes, both so, are memory texts. Yeah, this is the two sisters sitting together. They are uh, going back into their past, remembering, trying to recall, and uh, in flashes they come out with uh, uh, their family life, their parents, and it is all set in the uh, pre-partition days. And yeah, just uh, before partition just before partition and uh, so so memory plays a very significant role here also. Uh, Dr. Jain, uh, in what way you think that uh, Anita Desai is different as a writer? That she dwells more on the psychic reality than the physical reality, like plot or character or situation. How does uh, this uh, relate to Clear Light of Day? Well, uh, do we see any plot as such in this novel? No, I don't think we we see a plot. I think she is a naturalistic uh, novelist uh, who believes in uh, a character trying to shape the story rather than the 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 some uh, pre-determined plot that would determine the character. Uh, things happen and uh, they are given a, as much importance as the. any other item and there is uh, that sense of uh, control artistic control strict artistic control is perhaps absent dr jain i just because we are running short of time quickly just read this uh, she says somewhere i am interested in characters who are not average but have retreated or been driven into some extremity of despair and so turned against or made a stand against the general current it makes no demands it costs no effort but those who cannot follow it whose heart cry out the great no who fight the current and struggle against it they know what the demands are and what it costs to meet them this was in times of india 
she says i am not a feminist it's not feminism but yeah. interest in individuals that has taken her in that direction no i think that is very true yeah. uh, but before uh, we we, we uh, sign off i would like to uh, invite your attention to one other aspect of beam's character beam you know is a is a traditional uh, traditional within court traditional woman uh, who uh, plays the ro role of a nurturer but she is also uh, a person who who thinks that she is training her students to be a new woman yeah and also that she she repudiates the idea of marriage yeah. she says marriage is not everything yeah and there are hundred other things that i could think of doing now just listen to this she says what else can't you think i can think of a hundred things to do instead i won't marry and later on she says i shall work i shall do things now this is important i shall work you see a woman deciding to work and also she is a teacher and she wants to excel as a teacher yeah that i thought was a remarkable piece of uh, i think we we'll have to yes we'll have to continue this next time but i think we are running short of time now we must wind up so uh, uh, dr jain accidentally or incidentally we fell upon some similarities between yeah. dastani and anita desai we were just lucky we had not planned it that way but we did see a lot of things common stream of consciousness technique flashback weaving of history weaving of time uh, careful uh, you know uh, bringing the plot together the craftsman in both these writers and craft woman i should say and how uh, time becomes a four dimensional thing here and you have uh, i'm sure benefited a lot from dr jain's expertise and uh, i hope you read the play, play again after listening to today's uh, uh, what should say a little bit of uh, briefing or discussion on tara and clear light of day and uh, we would have liked if you had responded to us but uh, i we wish you good luck okay. and we'd come back to you again goodbye